Our next uh, speaker is Peter Martin from Invensys Operations Management. Peter is Vice President and Invensys and Invensys Fellow. Please welcome Peter. Thank you, Greg. Uh, thank you, ARC, for allowing me to be here. And it's nice to see everybody here this morning, nice and early. You'll notice that I'm not nearly as high tech as Paul. This is my iPad. But it works. It does all right. I'm a little older, too, but that's what happens. Uh, you know, I joined the industry, um, gosh, about 35 years ago. And I came into the Foxborough Company at that point in time. And I came in because of my knowledge of computers. At that point in time, we were starting to use digital computer technology on the plant floor. And we needed people that knew what a bit and a byte and so on and so forth was. But one of the things I noticed about industry at that time, and looking around the room, most of you don't remember this, because you'd have to be as old as me to remember this, but one of the things I noticed was it was a very, very solutions-oriented industry in the way we're trying to become today. That is, technology at that time was used to solve problems. The problem was identified first, and the technology was applied second. And with the introduction of the computer for the last 30 years, I've seen a huge shift, a huge shift in that we focus on the technology more than we focus on the solution. And we keep on developing new technology and nobody's quite sure why. Um, I think over the years of how this has happened, I think some of the great te technological programs uh, you know, that I've seen over the years, like I remember not too long ago where DCS companies were advertising their color palette in their CRT and their pixel resolution. And I often thought, how many pixels caused an industrial plant to work better? You know, it's hard to figure this stuff out. I remember computer integrated manufacturing. Some of you may not remember that, but I do. As a matter of fact, at one point in my life, my title was vice president of computer integrated manufacturing, and I had no clue what it was. But I was vice president of it. So, I, you know, that gave me some credibility. After they finally let me go from that job, I figured out what it was. If you tie all the computers in a plant together, something good is bound to happen. <laughs> it's amazing when you think about it. And I also remember in the late 1980s, expert systems. Right? You, if you said something had an expert system in it, everybody would buy it. it and by the way, nobody knew what an expert system was at the time, but they'd buy it because we wanted an expert system. It didn't matter whether the problem was algorithmic or heuristic. Expert system, we want one of those. And you know, over the years I've seen this over and over and over again where we push technology without any real understanding of why. What problem is it really gonna solve? And over the last few years I've been involved in an executive study where we've talked to about 1,500 different C-level executives across the industry. And what we've noticed is huge levels of executive frustration. I don't know if you've noticed it, but when I talk to these folks, I've noticed it. And their frustration is simple. We spent a lot of capital, we've bought a lot of technology, and I'm not sure anything's working any better. I'm not sure that the plant is running any better than it was in 1960. And yet, I've got all the pixels I need, I'm simming my life away, you know, but nothing's working any better. Where's the return on investment? Where's my improvement in profitability? You know, I, I believe that um, as I listened to Robert talk, the approach that Robert had this morning was different. It's we have a problem. How do we go after and solve the problem? How do we use technology that way? Um, what I'm seeing is executives are reluctant to invest in technology today because they haven't seen the results in the past. And we have got to turn that around. We need a more balanced view. And at Invensys, that's what you're trying to realize is a bit, little bit of a more balanced view. Yes, we need to look at the state-of-the-art technology. We must see what's available technologically. And we have to push that technology to a certain extent. But on the other hand, we have to look at what the problems are. We have to start with what does our client, what do the industrial manufacturers need to do to run their operations more efficiently, more profitably, more safely, and with less environmental impact? What are the problems? And once you figure out what the problem is, back calculating the technology becomes much easier. You know, just recently there's been a lot of um, discussion of Apple Computer and Steve Jobs. And when you look at the brilliance of Steve Jobs, he didn't know technology that well. 
His brilliance was not that. His brilliance was understanding what the problem was, what the issue was. He'd walk his, into his technologist and he'd say, can you build this? And they say, why? He said, don't worry about why. I know why. Build it. They need it. This is what they need. You see, I believe our industry needs to get back to that again. We have to go back to where we were in the 1970s. How do we use technology to solve problems? Yeah, the technology's good. What problems can we solve and how, we can, how can we drive profitability? My belief is we're right on the cusp of doing that. And when we do that, that, that attitude, that approach, is exactly what's going to transform our industry. That's what I believe a transformative technology is all about. Thank you.